What is up guys, the Franimal here, and today we're going to be taking a tour through my home gym. So just, just to give you guys a little context here, we are in northern New Hampshire, out in the middle of nowhere in the great open white mountains, and this is my barn. This is where all the magic happens. So we're gonna take a walk inside and show you exactly where it is. Look at that northern New Hampshire beauty. Don't mind these guys, they're just chilling up here. See, I have the saw, the miter saw set up, so I do a lot of building. So th this is the barn right here. We used to do a lot of haying and whatnot there, but this is where the gym is. So it's a little close off section here. So here we go. Oh yeah, check it out. So what we're gonna do is just kinda start from this side and walk away and just talk about all the equipment here. So first, of course, you know, we're out down in the middle of the winter, it's cold. We got our little little box heater. This thing heats this place up like nothing, like zero degree, negative degree weather. This thing will get this place up going. I'll be in here with short sleeves, getting a good sweat on. We got all that propane. So we have uh, some mats here. I used to wrestle, so I'd practice technique and whatnot on it. So the first piece of homemade equipment are these uh, boxes. So the, I use these to do like rack poles, high poles, any kind of RDLs, that kind of stuff. So they're just two by sixes uh, screwed together to kind of act as spacers. We have some other other ones here too. This is more of that uh, vintage, rustic, you know, old barn look. I believe those are about eight inches, and those provide about six inches of height. We have the boxing bag right here. Uh, that's not homemade. Uh, I actually bought that, but although that is homemade, <laughs> the the mount. So it's just uh, some two by sixes with a chain fastened around it, up on the ceiling rafters there. So we have a homemade weight tree right here. This is just a rough cut 2x6 that is screwed into the, the beam of the barn. And it's got these wooden dowels that stick out from it with holes drilled into it that support the weight. Um, those are two 45 pound plates right there. So that's 90 pounds there. Holds it like nothing. We got the, the 10s on the bottom, 45s there. 25s there. I always put the 45s in the middle because it's at the convenient height to grab it. I can't stand, and this is, you see these at all commercial gyms, the 45s are the lowest down. The heaviest weights should be in the most convenient place to pick it up, and that's why I put them there. And I put the 25s up there just because they just fit nicely up there. So here we have a homemade flat bench. So this thing is a tank, let me tell you. I put some crazy weight on this and it holds up like a beast so what it is is it just uh predominantly made out of four by fours for the the bases there and it's got uh that middle support there which is a four by six i added that into it uh just in case because you never know i mean that, that's the last thing i want is to be benching and have the thing break and be impaled by a four by four that would be uh pretty bad in the, the base or the top right here, this is just made out of uh, some plywood. And I bought this like vinyl wrap from Walmart and put this uh, actually foam board insulation on it, which is underneath it to kind of give it that padding. And it's just stapled at the bottom. So here we have the power rack. This thing is the hallmark of this entire home gym. This I'm not gonna lie, is probably the most beastly, intense, legit power rack you'll ever see, at least homemade power rack. I mean, it's the best one I've seen on YouTube 
or just anywhere. Uh, just the thickest, you know, biggest, most aesthetically pleasing. This thing took a while to make, but certainly was worth it. So it's just three two by sixes for the post. We have uh, for the post, and actually the 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 pieces that run that way too. The things that uh, these horizontal ones. That's a four by four there, four by six there. We got two inch holes drilled throughout the entire thing with these safeties. This is just a steel, I uh, believe it's an eighth inch, uh, inch and three quarter diameter. We have this PVC pipe on it, which uh, covers it. And this is mainly just to, meant to protect the bar's knurling, because this bar is a pretty nice bar, costs a lot, so I want to keep this thing in good shape. So with that PVC, it protects the bar and keeps that knurling nice and crisp. So there you see there, it's, it's looking looking pretty new. We also got some some band pegs on it. So right there, you uh, the reason why there's three is because if I'm benching, I usually uh, or the, there's three there, so you can like you can attach the bands from that one to that one, or you can attach it from that one to that one, and that way you can have different band tensions. Here we have the the racking system. So this is just uh, it's kind of like a massive J hook really. So it's just a like rough cut. 4x6 uh, and two 2x6 two screwed on, which kind of make a, a cup that hold the bar. And it's held in place uh, by two of that steel uh, pipe that goes into it. Now, I put over 600 pounds on this thing. I didn't lift it. It was more like a, a static test because, you know, I can't lift 600 pounds yet. Probably won't be able to for a, a while, at least, you know, squatter. That kind of stuff, I can I can certainly rack pull that much, but uh, yeah, so it's incredibly strong. Haven't had any problems with it so far, and it just it just looks nice. Like it just it looks like a real power rack. If you didn't you know see the seams and the the post, you you could mistake it for a real power rack. And if the holes were drilled straight, because some of them were kind of messed up, uh, there's also a pull up bar there as well. Which is plenty strong. I've done, you know, chin ups, pull ups, 120 pounds, fasted on me, you know, holds it fine. The bar has a little bend to it, but it doesn't break. So we have another weight tree there. Oh, I forgot to mention too, this platform that the power rack is on is also homemade. So this is just some, uh, some plywood, and it's got some more 2x6s under it. And it kind of makes a nice, uh, a nice finish, at least for that plywood. And this lifting platform is homemade as well. So this is just made out of mainly plywood. So it's about what's it like four, five ply uh, plywood layers thick. And this rubber mat, I actually just went to a local uh, scrap yard and they had this kind of kicking around. That's why it's it's pretty beat up, but it was free. But it's just kind of like a, a rubber mat. So I have that, uh, they kind of have a little shock absorbent when you're doing lifts. And this is also uh, a homemade band peg for the deadlifts because you can't really deadlift in there. Uh, the plates kind of hit the thing, but with this, if you can see, it actually lines up with that. So that way you can do deadlifts on the platform with, with bands on it. So all that works pretty good too. If I were to make that again though, I would definitely use metal for this because that thing can uh, bend quite a bit when you got some of the monster bands on it. So here we have a just a 12 inch wooden box. I use this for box squatting, can be used for step ups, you know, some single leg box jumps, that kind of stuff. Just four by fours, piece of plywood, simple, effective. Here we have a glute ham raise. This thing is also legit. I use this all the time for glute ham raises, back extensions, all you know. You can really, really hit that posterior chain with this. So it's just uh, this actually took a while to make too. Definitely not as long as the power rack, but it's legit. So we got this nice 
comfortable padding. It's like, uh, it's pretty thick, so it doesn't really mar your knees up when you use it. This pad here is also, well, this plate is adjustable. So you have the holes drilled in two inch increments on the main post here, and you got these pins that come out and that way. There's one on the other side too, so you can see two there. And this thing can actually slide on it. So that way if you wanna do back extensions or glute ham raises, you can accommodate for people with various limb lengths and you can just do different things with it. And we have this platform where you can step up, makes it nice, nice and convenient. Pretty stable because it's got that wide base. So here we have a plyo box. So this, uh, let me just tell you, I've cut up my shins a lot on this. So whenever I use it, I usually just drape a mat on this because if, you, if you're doing a plyo uh, box jump, if you miss on that bare plywood, that thing would just destroy your shins. But what's nice about this is one box actually provides three heights. So you can, you can lay it this way and you get that height. You can also lay it the tall way and you get another height or you can lay it like that and you can get that height. So uh, you have three different heights there. I believe it does about 42, 20, and about 24 inches. That was a failed piece of equipment. I just have it, I don't know why I have it there. This is actually not homemade. This is something my, my grandparents bought me. I still use it for incline benching and that kind of stuff because I haven't built an incline bench yet. Here is a seated calf raise machine. This thing, I, I use this all the time. This is super useful and it honestly took like two hours to make. Just really easy design and it just, it just works great. So we have uh, basically a lever arm there, a bolt fastened in it. Uh, we have the, it's adjustable so you can take this pin or this bolt right here and you can move it to holes and that way it'll adjust this thing up and down uh, to accommodate people with varying leg lengths. So that's all padded too, so it doesn't, it's pretty comfortable on the knees. The seat's nice and padded. And uh, the reason why I have that uh, kind of styrofoam plywood there is to raise it up and get, uh, so, so th uh, with that way you can get a better pre-stretch on the cast when you're working it. Because that is one thing that uh, I would have done differently if I made it, is have some kind of lever on that uh, isn't fixed. Because... That there provides a nice safety, so you don't, uh, you know, if you were to fail a wrap, that would catch it, but that prevents you from going down uh, and really getting that deep stretch on the calves. Still, still really useful though. So we got some battle ropes. Uh, these aren't homemade. I bought these from eBay, really cheap. Got the little rack fastened into the mount. Here, uh, this is kind of like an experimental design. I have not yet finished it, but this is a, a multi-grip bar. So we have uh, just a, a basic rectangle, some steel pipe in there. So you get, you get those different lengths. And we got the steel pipe to actually hold the weight on. Right now, it's honestly just in there with hot glue and it's not that stable. So I don't use it for heavy work. I'll mainly just use it for tricep extensions, uh, skull crushers, hammer curls, you know, kind of light, lighter weight accessory work, but I won't use it for like benching. I gotta, I gotta kind of tweak the design, fix that, but it, it's still, still pretty useful. Here we have a, a hex deadlift bar. Now this, uh, I actually take a lot of pride in this because I bought a welder and kind of learned how to weld. Uh, it was a stick welder and welded this thing together. I bought all the steel from, uh, this like tractor supply place in my town and welded this thing up and it has got some it's got some serious strength. I have you know I, I've loaded about 700 pounds on this and it held it fine. Uh, I, I use this all the time for heavy, heavy farmers walks, uh, hex bar deadlifts, just very useful and again did not cost me much because I bought the steel cheap. 
and did all the welding myself. We just got some uh, standard weight plates there. Here we have a reverse hyper. This thing, this was actually one of the first pieces of equipment I built. Um, it's about three years old, but it is still holding out pretty well. So we have, uh, it's basically just a lever arm there. You got this little uh, apparatus here. Uh, I really had to reinforce this thing because the, the first design, uh, it was slightly questionable. So I, I really just put some steel ties in there, just screwed the heck out of it. And now it's uh, it's pretty pretty strong, pretty stable. We have that where you'll you'll hook around your feet, and that way you can do reverse hyper extensions. Nice and padded too. We got these grips you can hold on to. You can kind of like hook your elbows around them. We also have these over here if you want to extend your arms and grab them. This right here was uh the initial design if I wanted to do like back extensions I would just put my foot on that and lie kind of like this and do back extensions like that but I don't really use anymore because I got the, the glued ham rays still really useful for works great for reverse hypers here we have a chest supported row machine this thing uh, it's all right the design Definitely could be a little a, a little better, but uh, yeah. So you'll just you just lie on that. Uh, you got the bar, the lever arm attached with a hinge. Stack the plates on there. It's all good. Uh, pretty simple design. If I if I were to make it again though, I'd probably uh, because the thing is it's fixed on that so it uh, it's a little awkward when you go through the range of motion but it still works decent here we have a homemade cable pulley system so this thing is pretty legit let me tell you it uh, functions just like you know those cable pulley machines that you find at the gym that cost you know three or four grand only this thing costs like 50 bucks to make um, it's really just and it's really low profile too because it's pretty much all fastened to the wall. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So it's just, uh, I believe, a 2 by 10 there. We have eye hooks, you know, throughout three heights on the board. We got a pulley, the cable that goes through there, uh, hooks around there to this kind of dual pulley system, goes up there, and bam, you have the weights right there. I use all these kettlebells for just because it works a lot uh, more nicely to switch the weight out it's just really fast so and it's always got two handles too so you can do flies and all that uh you got the plywood out there because if you're doing you know flies or whatever you want to have something to, to put your back against so that uh that thing works really nicely definitely well worth the time and money put into it so we got all the kettlebells. These things go up to 100 pounds. We got some. Those aren't homemade. I bought those. Just some Olympic adjustable dumbbells. We got some accessories here. Some knee wraps. Some standard weight plates. All the good stuff there. Now this shelf too is actually homemade. I built that. Uh, simple design just got 45 degree braces gotta have the mirror too i think i picked this up at like a dump or something you can always have the the mirror to, to see the progress and everything so we go got the clock that uh it's broken it's too cold <laughs> it was actually over over christmas break i was here working out and the clock stopped working it was so cold it's uh pretty pretty, pretty ridiculous but we got the screws to hold the weights up Got some chains if you want to do any kind of pull-ups or whatever. Get some chains, throw them around you. You could do some weighted pull-ups, dips, weight belt. Got some bigger chains just in case. Uh, each one of those chains themselves weigh like 22 pounds, so you don't even got to strap weight onto you. You can just put those on you and you know do pull-ups and chin-ups. We have some. Pretend like you didn't see that shake weight. I don't use that ever. It's like my sister's. I think she left it in here, but. We have a homemade 
Farmer's Walk Bar. This again was uh, this too, like the hex bar. It was all welded. So uh, I bought the steel from that same junkyard tractor place. Welded this thing up. Uh, I believe I put around the most I put on was about 200 pounds per handle. Uh, held it fine. I mean, uh, if it did break, that'd be pretty bad because it could literally like fall on your toe and just destroy your foot. But that has not happened yet. So, <laughs> the last piece of equipment I want, I want to show you guys is this homemade dumbbell. So this, I actually have a separate video on this uh, and how I made it. I have the guide, but this thing weighs like 95 pounds or something. So it's basically just two massive blocks of concrete and a wooden dowel here that holds it together. I mean, I, I'll use it for rows and whatnot. It's not that practical in terms of like presses and you know, flat benching just because these, it's just so massive. It, it gets in the way, but, uh, it's just, it was just really cool to make, uh, this concrete, it's got some kind of rubber coating on it. So it doesn't chip and break off. But yeah, if I were to make it again too, I definitely use a metal steel pipe handle because I realized that this wooden dowel doesn't take torsional force that well, or just wooden general. And when you kind of pull it like that, there's a lot of twisting in there. You can see, I kind of just like shafted some uh zip ties on there to try and reinforce it but it hasn't broke yet this whole gym too i actually did all the insulation myself too so we just got the the fiberglass for the walls and the the seal is also insulated as well it didn't used to be insulated and i'd have this like massive propane heater uh just like torpedo heater to heat this place up and it'd like honestly be like running a, a car in here you just like the fumes would be so bad but with that insulation it's pretty nice so that that is that is honestly it uh that's a home gym i use this all the time it is uh it just i take so much pride in it like i come in here every time every day i work out and it's just like just looking at all the equipment it just makes me feel good it makes me feel accomplished <laughs> but yeah The whole point I want to make with this video is that if you don't have a gym and that's your reason why you don't work out, that is not legit. That is not a valid reason to not work out and get in shape. I don't have a gym. I didn't have a gym around my area just because my town is so small and so isolated. So guess what I did? I brought the gym to me and I built one. And that, that's exactly what you can do as well. So if you have a friend that always complains about not being able to work out because they don't have a gym. I want you to share this video with them and it will just blow their mind because it will show you what you are capable of and what you can achieve if you actually think critically about the situation and try to apply your knowledge and resolve it. That's what I did. I didn't have a gym. I built one. It's working great and you can do the same as well. So if you made it to the end of this video, Give it a thumbs up uh, and consider subscribing to the channel if you guys want to see more in-depth videos about each piece of equipment. I can certainly make that. So in the meantime, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.